Hi friends, welcome to Creative DIY Purpose. Today we will be making DIY transfers and applying them to thrifted items to give them a makeover. I will share helpful tips for creating quality transfers along with some of their pros and cons. I have a lot to share with you today, so come on, let's get started. You can also find the written version of this tutorial on my blog along with free printables and any products used in this video are all linked down below. Each of our items today was cleaned and then painted with DIY paint in the color Vintage Linen. Before we upcycle our thrifted items today, we're going to make some transfers. We'll only need a few supplies to create these transfers, and the first one is just a basic inkjet printer. If you have a screen on your printer, go to Setup, scroll down, and there should be Tools and there's a variety of options to be able to help you get clearer images. If you don't have this screen on your printer, you may have to go in through the printer app that you might have installed on your laptop or PC. There are two different ways that you can prepare your freezer paper to be able to print on. Number one, you can cut a sheet of freezer paper the same size as a standard sheet of paper and then feed it through that way. Or you can attach your freezer paper onto a sheet of cardstock or a thicker sheet of paper using scotch tape, which I'm doing here. If you do this method, I would recommend cutting your freezer paper about a half an inch smaller than the piece of cardstock or paper that you're attaching it to. This will allow for your scotch tape to be able to lay smooth with nothing folded around the edges. I recommend this method for printers that tend to get jammed easily. And you will want the shiny side of the freezer paper to be up because that's the side that your ink is going to be printed on. And after you've printed onto your freezer paper, you can use a Zacto knife or a pair of scissors to just slice the scotch tape so that you can reuse that piece of cardstock or paper over again. Just make sure that the scotch tape is completely smooth so that it will not catch inside of your printer. I sit down at one time and cut several pieces of freezer paper and store them in between cardstock and put them in a folder so that way I have them all ready to go when I need them. I usually just feed the sheet of freezer paper through without backing it, but here I am using the sheet that I just taped on just so I don't waste it. Just don't forget to reverse your image if it has any words or letters in it. You can download this free printable over on my blog. All right, let's get creating. Our first project is this little metal tray. You're going to want to apply transfers onto a porous surface, one without a lot of texture. If you are using a thicker paint, I recommend softer brush strokes to lessen the texture. The items that I painted today, unfortunately have a lot of texture. I was down to the bottom of my can, so the paint was a little bit thicker. So your images will probably come out a little bit bolder than you see in my video today. Here I'm just using a little scraper to apply even pressure. That way you'll get a more even look. You will want to rub over each section a few times to allow the ink to transfer evenly. Think of it as layering the ink onto the surface every time that you rub that transfer. I do use my fingertips a lot, especially for the smaller transfers and in those really detailed areas that you want them to come out. But you might find something that works totally different for you. Here I'm wet distressing the edges just to add to the age look. And I think it really has that vintage vibe. Be sure to stay with me to the end of the video because we're gonna go over how to seal your projects. And I will also show you other items that I've made recently using this transfer method. And I will link those videos at the end. When you are creating or choosing a graphic to transfer and you want a bold contrast, try to pick one with a wide font that has a crisp image. Our next item is this little wooden sign that I picked up for $4.99. Here's another free printable available for you over on my blog. 
Again, I printed it out in reverse image and you'll see that I did pick a very thin, narrow font and it did come out light, which is why I thought to share that tip before showing you. Um, but I like it the way that it came out because I like that faint aged vintage look. But if you want to go for like a nice farmhouse sign or something bolder, just pick a different font. But the image is available for you over on my blog. And you might just want to apply it on with like a water slide decal or rice paper. To apply this transfer on the sign probably took me maybe six, seven minutes total. Normally, like on the bottle or the tray, it only takes a few minutes. Now, what I do love about this method is you can pull back your transfer while holding it in place with your other hand. And this allows you to see how well your transfer is adhering to ensure that you'll get full coverage. So that part is really nice. Now, I did make a mistake on this sign. I believe it was on the eye, yes. See on the eye how it's super dark? It's because I pressed too hard. I probably used my fingernail. And so instead of layering it, the ink, it just did it all in at once. I did take a paper towel and kind of try to blot that. And it, it helped a little bit, as you can see there. You could also take some fine grit sandpaper if you're doing like a distressed item and go over it so that it kind of blends in a little bit better. I do want to share a bonus tip. If your image comes out too light, you can go over it with like a Sharpie marker or a paint marker and fill in your whole design. Some of the pros to a freezer paper transfers, you can create and use your own designs to transform your projects. You have unlimited choices for designs. You can print from thousands and thousands of available graphics and printables online. They're inexpensive to create and your freezer paper can be reused for other projects just by simply wiping off the used transfer. And sometimes you can even get two transfers from one print. Our next project is this little ceramic pitcher. And this image came off of Canva. Dot com, which I also have linked below. And I believe it was one of the pro version images. I'm going to put my paintbrush there just to prop up the image. I am working on a little curved surface. So you really try to hold that transfer steady right in the middle. And I love the way that this came out. There was actually some red tones in with the image. You can kind of see it there. It reminds me of a charcoal drawing with a little bit of colored pencil in there. All right, now we're going to look at some of the cons to using these freezer paper transfers. If your printer is temperamental, this might not be the best option. You really can't print your images too far ahead. For best quality, you're going to want to use your transfers within five minutes to about an hour after printing. The surfaces you apply the transfers to must be porous, but not overly textured. All right, now on to my favorite project. I love upcycling and repurposing empty bottles. You just have to make sure that your transfer is lined up where you want it and you're good to go. Super easy on a nice flat surface like this bottle. All right, now it's time to talk sealers. I recommend taking your favorite sealer and just testing on a sample piece using the same type of surface with your printer ink, allowing it to dry to ensure that it doesn't smear or reactivate the ink. Here's some projects that I used freezer paper transfers to create. I will link all three of these videos below for you so that you can check them out. If you guys have any questions, let me know. It's definitely a really neat option, especially if you like creating your own designs like I do. In next week's video, we're going to be comparing five different transfer methods side by side to see the end result. And I've got a really neat free printable for you. We're going to be creating a vintage inspired garland with our printable. 
Friends, I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it has inspired you to create your own DIY transfers. Have a super blessed week and I'll see you Sunday.